Welcome everybody to today's show. It's the greatest show on earth where the saints of God march and thwart all the attacks of the enemy and rebuke all the demons in Jesus' name. We lift up each other and edify each other daily in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for your provision. I made a video earlier today and I am thoroughly convinced that over 100 mile an hour winds came here last night. And I've been a victim of weather warfare for a number of years, a couple of decades. And um, every time the Lord has pulled me through, and I think there's so many times that we don't even realize that the, the love of God and His angels just permeate all around us, our whole being. We don't even feel it, we don't even know it, but God's doing wondrous miracles for us. And I'm thoroughly convinced that... Um, our loving Father sent His angels last night and held His hand, just like He held the Red Sea, and just like He's going to do again for us, for Moses and the Israelites to come through the Red Sea and come to the Promised Land. That is a uh, definitely uh, embodies what we're going to go through. It's uh, definitely we're going to go through things like that where our Lord and Savior. Now I know Lord God stopped that storm last night. Uh, one tree fell on one house here in this town. Uh, talked to some locals. Also, uh, I don't want to give off, off topic. This is a Bible study, but I just want you all to know that I'm uh, doing... I'm going to start with the phone again, huh? I'm doing an a initiative here, which I don't even believe in voting, but a lot of people, they're already registered to vote. I'm getting signatures for medical marijuana because Big Pharma and their little snake isn't helping anybody and their side effects. I don't, I'm not against uh, people using marijuana for pain relief, um, stretching. Back in the day, I had a use for it too. Um, <clears throat> smoked the peace pipe with a lot of American Indians. <laughs> But this video is about Isaiah 40, 31. I don't want to make it too long, but it's a wonderful um, example of our Lord using uh, even animals in, in the biblical history, throughout history, to, um, to, to help his people um, when they needed it most. So Isaiah 40, 31, I just uh, I want to read that. They that wait upon... Yeah, it's the last verse in Isaiah 40. Um, talking about... He gives power to the faint. To them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait... There it is again, wait. And I'm going to do another video soon about all the instances in the Bible where it talks about waiting upon the Lord. Because a lot of people are um, commenting... No. Not too many of my subscribers. We all know we're, we're not going to the pre-tribulation rapture. Um, but wait upon the Lord. It seems to be a theme throughout the Bible that uh, we must wait upon the Lord. He's not coming today or tomorrow. So um, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk. And not faint. Now, that's symbolic, right? We're gonna, we're not gonna be weighed down with our fleshly bodies during the tribulation. We're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, shucking and jiving, and we're not gonna be running in fear, though. We're gonna be standing right there. We're gonna be standing in front of the kings of this earth. Um, clarify something. Before they come from the sky, claiming to be the enlightened beings, we're gonna have people on the ground in Israel rebuilding the temple. And uh, the Pope and the Vatican and all these role players playing their roles. And then they're going to give their power to the beast that ascends from the abyss. It comes from the sky. They're going to say it comes from fake space. So, um, on that topic, I want to go over the uh, um, why Cain's sacrifice was not accepted um, to God. Because when I made a video almost two years ago about this, um, but when Adam and Eve knew they didn't know they were naked right they were walking they were they didn't have clothing on and when they finally sinned and ate from the or beguiled with the tree the tree of life they ate from the tree of life they knew the knowledge of good and evil and the devil had um, the serpent the dragon had beguiled them and so God in Genesis says he clothed them with animal skins but before that all the trees were there to eat it wasn't meat but if you eat like an almond 
a walnut, it tastes like meat, gives a, it gives a person protein and energy. And so that's what they were meant to eat. Then God cursed that we should have dominion over the animals and eat meat. So really, I eat meat in times of spiritual warfare. There's nothing better than a good steak. But um, I've been laying off meat lately. I never eat pork. It's not a religious thing. I just don't like it. They're too cute. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. So Cain's sacrifice was not accepted. Abel's meat sacrifice was because God had already killed an animal to make coats of skins. Therefore, he um, commanded that the, the Israelites would ha have animal sacrifices, and the, the, the high priest would go in the temple, and the atonement, all the all the feasts, and all the um, animal sacrifices were permitted and allowed, and even um, demanded by God. Um, with a sweet aroma to God would be, and now the, the the Jews in Israel are waiting to build the third temple. Not going to be a sweet aroma to God. It's going to be blasphemy to God. But it has to has to be, has to come to pass. Or it's in prophecy. Um, but Jesus Christ was the sacrifice on the cross and the atonement for all sins and His blood shed for all of us and all humankind. And let us lift up everybody now in Jesus' name. Come to Jesus. Come come to Jesus. And all of you watching today, all my new subscribers, I thank you very much. Old subscribers, people that they've unsubscribed, uh, maybe I'll go make comments to some old people to see if they unsubscribed you come back. But, um, we're over 300, so we're going to be like Gideon's army. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. So, no more animal sacrifices. We have the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you, thank you, God Almighty. So, this all boils down to faith. One thing I want to say before... Uh, Go into my thesis is uh, the 666, uh, the last trumpet, the last seal. Jesus opens the seals. I think we're in the first seal right now, uh, about to go into the second seal. And the, the seals, the vials, and the trumps. At the last trump, we're caught up. At the sixth trump, at the end of the fifth to the sixth trump, the false Christ will appear. And uh, you're going to see men on the ground in Israel before that, playing their roles. So I'm not really big into gematria, but I've seen, I mean, I know what it's all about. And I know they use all these numbers and God has their days numbered. And uh, they're not accomplishing what they want to accomplish because God, God is holding them back. And uh, Michael the Archangel is he who lets. Only he who let will continue to let until he be taken out of the way. That's Michael the Archangel. And when Michael the Archangel is removed, Daniel 12, 1 says, he's going to stand up for the people. Thank you, Jesus. So I did a little Demetria years ago on uh, multiples of six. See, if you start with six, 12, 18, uh, A is six, B is 12, C is 18. And I don't know if that's a unique formula for Demetria, but I did that one time and just to figure out that if you spell out computer, after you come to Z, you spell out computer, it comes to 666 using multiples of six from A through Z. And so that's, just, that's the computer. It's the image of the beast. It's the artificial intelligence. Um, the transhumanist technology. I want to say one thing that just came to my mind. This guy that does um, the transgender things, uh, Slave New World or whatever. You know, I, I don't know, man. I get, if I go on there and leave comments and somebody come up, I get so many trolls that come to my channel, so I, I'm suspecting, using my uh, discernment, that that's kind of a distraction. Because once you know about it, it's like Gematria. I mean, I, I like Gematria. I know what they're doing with it. It's helped me figure out a lot. Um, I like Zach. Um, and, and a few other people, but I don't watch them much because I don't need to know every little move that they're going to make. I'm not concerned with that. But God, uh, God allows me things to. And I forgot what I was going to say. But we're going to get into this um, about faith. Isaiah 40:31 says, "Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles." Is that literal? <laughs> are we going to? Are we going to? Our eagle's going to come, and we're going to grab on their wings, and they're going to take us. And I don't believe that he's going to transport us. I had a subscriber say that one. They're going to transport us from one place to another. I don't believe that. Uh, but we can, big, huge eagles can come and pick us up and fly us where we want to go, right? And if nobody, is it literal or symbolic? I believe it's, it's symbolic. It is. But it could be literal, too, because here's some examples in the Bible. Um, Eight examples where God used animals to help people. 
Isaiah 40, 31. We do that. Wait. Uh, Proverbs 12, 10. And you know, God made the animals out of the same uh, dust. He made men. So, um, Proverbs 12, 10, 12, 10. The godly care for their animals, but the wicked are always cruel. And I grew up on a dairy farm. I love the animals. I, I, that was my job, feeding the calves. We had 250 milking cows. And at any time, 50, 40 calves that I took care of in the heifers. And uh, I loved it. You know, looking back, it was just the greatest upbringing I could ever have. Uh, my mom left when I was one years old. Took my sister and my two brothers stayed. Me and my brother stayed with. And then my little brother came. My dad remarried when I was seven. I stayed with my dad, my grandma and grandpa, and my two aunts. They all spoke Portuguese and grew up with the Portuguese culture. We loved it. We loved it. We loved our culture. We loved our linguiça. We loved our bullfights. We loved speaking Portuguese. But my dad said, when you go out there, you're an American. You don't hyphenate your name. When you go to school, if you don't know English, adapt and overcome. Compensate. You can do it. <laughs> we didn't hyphenate our Americanism, but I'm proud of my culture, as everyone is. You know, we're the people, man. We're people. So, um, in the Portuguese culture, you look at the Portuguese soccer team. There is such a mixed um, diversity on the Portugal soccer team. We're from the Azores, but more like a plucker there. But it doesn't even matter. But you can see the darkest skinned person on the Portugal soccer team to the um, lightest skin. And we know the history of the Portuguese. They tried to blame the Portuguese for starting slavery, too, and that's a big lie. So, I love the animals. So, here's one example Noah sent a raven and a dove. Noah, wait, Genesis 8, 6 through 12. Yeah, Noah sends a raven and a dove out and it come back with an olive um, um, leaf and they didn't come back the first time. And the second example is the Egyptian plagues where Moses, uh, God's used frogs, grasshoppers or locusts and flies to accomplish his will for his glory. Um, numbers, or third example, Numbers 22, 28. Balaam, hmm, and the donkey, uh, he's riding the donkey, and he's gonna, the king of Moab sent Balaam, kind of like the king now sent Balaam, to curse the Israelites, the spiritual Israelites. <laughs> and uh, God sent an angel to block the path, and the donkey would not move, in spite of what the ass that was riding him kept hitting him and beating him. And then the donkey spoke and said, what have I done to you to make you beat me three times? A donkey spoke. And there's nothing that God can't do to accomplish his will. For example, Jonah 1.17. We know that Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh and, and preach the word of the Lord, but God said, you're going to do it anyway. So he had a well or a big old fish swallow him up and uh, dropped him off right where he needed to be three days and three nights, which is the only sign that we should seek. Today is Jesus in Selah. Or, let's say Sheol, <laughs> for three days. Um, fifth example, 1 Kings 17, 3, 4. Um, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, um, this is by Elijah. Elijah said, go leave this place and go east of the Jordan. I have directed ravens, God telling him, to supply you with food. So the ravens brought Elijah meat. Uh -huh. There's nothing that we can do. Nothing that our Lord can't do. Let us grow in faith. I've grown in faith so much over the years because I've seen the power and the miracles of God. I've even seen men, men die, okay, um, by the hand of God. And it's strict to my faith to know that when, when you're one of his elect, we are his elect, and we're protected. There is nothing that we should fear ever. Get fear out of your minds, out of your heart, and out of your soul, and out of your spirit. We don't know what that word is. Thank you, Jesus. So, the, Elijah's understeady. And prophet Elisha, 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 um, six examples, 2 Kings 23, 25. Um, this proves an example of what God will do to um, um, anybody who comes against him. And uh, moreover, anyone who comes against his prophets uh, will not be tolerated. The youths, the youths were mocking Elisha and God, sent two angry bears out of the woods to kill them. And Bethel was full of idolatry. So, uh, set an example to the rest of the people there, huh? Uh, seventh example, Daniel 6.22 in the lion's den in Babylon. Uh, you, you know the king liked him, but he, had to, he didn't obey his command. So they put him in the lion's den and everyone uh, 
The Daniel said, as for us, we will obey our Lord. No matter what decrees that Caesar sends down or what edicts we're commanded to fall by this world, we will not. We will not if it's against God. Don't be compromised. Let's be strong. Let's draw the line in the sand as Jesus did. Eighth example, Jesus in the Palm Sunday donkey fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy that he would ride in on a, on a, on a donkey. Matthew 21, 2, and 3. Um, so those are examples of how God uses animals. So will we mount upon the wings of eagles? <laughs> Amen, we probably will, right? There's anything possible with the Lord. So just a couple other things I want to go over, but you know how I forget uh, what I was going to say. So um, let's see. Oh, no, I'm going to do, we're going to do a, you know, I wrote this book 2007, and I talked about one of my um, subscribers, is it uh, uh, JK or, uh, I can't remember, I love you guys all though, um, I thought that the um, Islamic armies would be um, the eastern armies of the false prophet, which would be Islam and the Pope, would Against the armies of the Antichrist, the European and you know the European Union and Vatican. Okay, but I don't think that anymore. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to uh, do more Bible studies as soon as I. I'm going to work here for one month in Nebraska, God willing, and then uh, uh, the petition just went up. So all you praying for me, I'm praying for you too, and I just I, we bless the Father God for all His answers, prayers. We give Him glory and thanks every day. No matter what the weather's like or no matter what's going on in the world around us, we'll focus on Him. Or let our eye be single and focus on Him. Okay, now I'm going to do a song. One of my old songs. Written years ago, but the world wasn't ready for it. Some of us are 30 years ahead of our time. Some of us are 30 years behind our time. Like when I'm getting signatures and somebody says, I don't sign petitions. I always tell them, wow, sir, you're way ahead of your time. And they look like that and go, they don't even have these in Russia and China. And I've been saying that for years. <laughs> so this is a song I put together years ago. Um, it's called Grand Deception and Retinal Sackcloth. Um, your piety toward the enemy will leave you baseless, staring at the faceless, a tyranny which rules and leaves you empty. Hearken to the hideous, mysterious hyenas feeding, carnivorously eating like vultures, our deathly, fleshly cultures left bleeding. Chorus. Lockstep with Jesus they tread, saints of God marching in, walking with ease on the enemy's head, on to victory where new life begins. I rises to see the LED in the name of security. Mine eyes have seen through the smoke screen in my big brother's eye there is a beam. Scanning the senses across the seas, a tidal wave of conspiracy. A hand, a finger, a hand, a retina scan. Now you can get your GMO soylent green. Lockstep with Jesus they tread, saints of God marching in, walking with ease on the enemy's head, on to victory where new life begins. A sedative for the masses, a cultural war, a division of classes, dividing the water with political fodder, showering all with acidic gases. Elephants and donkeys, elephants and donkeys, they're all a bunch of animals. Unevolved monkeys, money junkies, spiritual cannibals. Lockstep with Jesus they tread, saints of God marching in, walking with ease on the enemy's head, unto victory where new life begins. Inbreds intensify their immaculate imitation, gratified by his hollow incantations. With cunning duplicity they follow the entity and bow to the abomination. UFOs feel the coals of alien abduction, seeking souls in a game of satanic seduction. Higher intelligence meets scientific irrelevance in a vacuum of people reduction. Man-made world gone mad, fallen angels are physically clad. Interplanetary visitations, the news of fleshly gravitations means you've all just been had. 
Pigs always wanted to gore. Cloven footed wild boars. In scarlet veil and pimper nail, they lust for the harlot whore. Lockstep with Jesus they tread, saints of God marching in, walking with ease on the enemy's head, on to victory where new life begins, because Jesus crushed the serpent's head. Thank you, Jesus. I think this has gone long enough. We pulled the trifecta. When I get done with this month of petitioning, I'm going to do nothing, but uh, the Lord's going to bless me with enough money, God willing, that nothing's going to happen. In, you know, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in Seattle. I know that Elvis ain't going to come from the sky. And I'm just praying against it, that Satan's attacks on our cities and this nation and all the people that want to come and crash this country to bring their new world order, that the Lord will thwart their, pan, their plans in Jesus' name. That's right. Not going to happen again, just like the 100,000 body bags and the freezer trucks and the death. Angel of death they wanted to bring on Easter. This ain't going to happen either. It's all in God's time. We give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you so much.